Welcome to Pilot Training Flight Simulator, or PTFS, an arcade-style flight simulator on Roblox that allows anyone, regardless of skill level, to enjoy the wonders of flying. PTFS isn't designed to be, or is, realistic, but enjoyable and simple. Let's start by spawning at an airport. Here I am at Greater Rockford. As I'm on my own, there's no planes to see, but the chances are, when you join, you'll see planes taxiing around, taking off and landing. In order to get around fast, I'm going to select the run tool and activate it by holding down left click. I'm now at a plane spawner. I'm going to unequip any tools that I have equipped and click the box. Here you will see all the categories of aircraft. Most aircraft are free, especially airliners, cargo planes, light aircraft and old military. However, if you wish to support the game, a few planes are game passes, and some of them are group access, which means you gain access to them when you join the Pilot Training Club group. I'm going to choose the Avro Vulcan in Old Military, as it's my favourite plane. The menu will close, and as long as there's nothing in the way, it will be spawned behind you. If there was already a plane spawned by that plane spawner, you'll be told at the top of your screen, where it will ask you to clear the area. You can either manually climb into the pilot seat, or you can hover your mouse over the plane and press Z to get into the pilot seat, X to get into the co-pilot seat, or C to get into a passenger seat. Note, not all planes have co-pilot seats or passenger seats. Once you're in, you'll see a plane tool. Equip that and you'll find that a plane GUI pops up on the top of your screen. Before we start the engine, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and if you scroll all the way in, you'll be in the cockpit view, where you can hold down right click on your mouse to look around. You can press the controls button near the top of your screen to see a list of controls. Let's go through them. Press E on your keyboard to start the engines. If you have sound on, you'll hear them. Use W and S or up arrow and down arrow if you prefer to increase and decrease the throttle. If you hold it down, it'll keep increasing or decreasing. Since for now, I'm just going to be taxiing, I will stick to about 2% throttle for this aircraft. When you're taxiing, you use your mouse to steer, as you can see here. If you want to reverse or push back, press P and you'll go backwards instead of forwards and you'll be limited to a speed of 5, allowing you to safely travel backwards. Ensure you have a bit of throttle, otherwise you won't move. The final thing we can try out on the ground is free cam mode. If you press C, your camera will be able to move all the way around and you won't be able to control the plane while it's like this. This allows you to get better views, or take screenshots for example. Ok, it's time we take off. It's advised that you taxi to the runway and take off there. In order to take off, simply hold W until your throttle goes to 100%. Before you do that, notice the taxi indicator in the top right of your screen. If that disappears, it means that you're fast enough to take off. Use your mouse to keep yourself on the centre line, the centre of the runway. Once the taxi indicator disappears, Make a mental note of what speed roughly this was, as you'll use this to help you land. You can move your mouse to the top of the screen in order to rotate and climb up. Note, don't have your camera facing all the way down. Having it at a flat angle, something like this, means your plane will be guided correctly for takeoff. Once you've taken off, you can press G to bring up your gear, if your plane has retractable gear, and congrats you've taken off. Once you're airborne, you can see that if you move your mouse around, the plane will go where you tell it. If you want to slow down, feel free to decrease your throttle. However, if you get too slow, you'll stall and fall out of the sky, and you don't want that to happen. To recover, add full power and attempt to position yourself facing down. Once your speed is recovered, feel free to pull back up again. Ok, it's time for the rest of the controls. If you press R, your mouse control will be disabled and you'll automatically be levelled out, maintaining your altitude. This is useful if you have to focus on something else, it'll keep you going straight and level. Now let's disable it by pressing R again. Now let's check out cruise mode. If you press T on your keyboard, you'll notice you freeze. If you're in an airliner and you enable cruise mode, it will allow passengers and the co-pilot to walk around the plane as it isn't moving. Sadly, due to Roblox physics and replication, people can't walk around the plane while it's moving, otherwise it'll just look weird. We have tried this before. This also allows the captain to increase the flight duration and make airline roleplays cooler. On to the final control section, advanced mode. If you want to be able to do stunts, or you just want more of a challenge, there is an alternative control mode that you can activate with Z. 
This only changes the way the mouse controls the plane in the air. Let's take a look at what it does. Here I am moving my mouse around in the normal control mode, but if I press Z, you will see an indicator come up at the top right saying advanced mode. And now take a look at how my mouse controls the plane. When in this mode, I'd recommend that you go in first person. If you want to turn, move your mouse to one side of the screen to roll about 30 degrees or less for a bigger or less manoeuvrable aircraft. And to keep the bank, maintain how far up you're pointing or your pitch. To stop turning, just roll level again. To do stunts like rolls, move your mouse to one side of the screen and keep it there. And for loops, just move it to the top of your screen. If you struggle to fly with advanced mode or you just want that extra bit of control, A and D provide extra side-by-side -side motion, also known as yaw. Feel free to use this to help you fly. Okay, that's everything. Now let's come into land. When you're getting quite close to the runway, if you have retractable gear and it's up, press G to bring it back down. Do you remember that mental note that you made earlier of what roughly the speed was when the taxi indicator disappeared? Go to that speed again, just a bit faster. You want to be going slightly quicker when coming into land, and this will also help as you'll probably be adjusting your pitch occasionally, and the last thing you want to do is stall. If you see red or white lights by the runway when coming into land, those are called pappies. If all four of them are white, it means you're coming in too high for landing. If all are red, you're too low, and if it's half and half, you're coming in perfectly. When getting right up close to the runway, start pulling up a bit to decrease your descent and try to make the tyres touch the ground as smoothly as possible. And now you've landed. There aren't that many controls, so it's worth learning them and that way you can maximise your flying skills. Okay, now how to fly a plane with a controller. If you've skipped to this bit and you've not played PTFS before, it's highly recommended to watch the keyboard and mouse guide that I've just done as many concepts there will be relevant for this section. Roblox officially only supports Xbox controllers, but with some simple software, you can use PlayStation controllers too. Anyway, I'll assume you've already done that. It can simply be found by Googling something like how to use PlayStation controller on PC. The Xbox and PlayStation controller layout isn't exactly the same, but it's extremely similar. The left stick is move on Roblox, the right stick is move camera. Pressing the right stick in is zoom camera. The left and right bumpers at the top are switch tool and A on the Xbox controller and X on the PlayStation controller is jump. Those are the basic Roblox controls for the controller. These still apply when you're in the plane, so don't accidentally switch out of the plane tool or jump out. In order to activate controller mode, once you're in the plane, equip the plane tool and then turn on the engine with the controller, which is Y on Xbox controller and Triangle on PlayStation controller. That's it. As long as you turned on the engine with the controller and not the keyboard after you got into the plane, you're in controller mode and ready to fly. We have B and X for throttle up and down on Xbox and circle and square on PlayStation controller. The left stick is the same as the mouse, so use it for taxiing and the right stick is for the camera. Press in the right stick in order to change the zoom and when in first person, you can use the right stick to look around. Remember advanced mode from earlier? The way that the left stick on the controller operates is the same as how the mouse works in advanced mode. Anyway, it'll all be clear once you take off. While we're taxiing to the runway, if you press the up on the D-pad, you'll notice it does the same thing as pressing P. It toggles reverse mode. Let's disable it and take off. Once you've taken off, press down on the D-pads to bring up your landing gear if you have retractable gear. And there we go, take off successful. Have a go at flying around and whenever you're ready, you can land. Okay, now time for helicopter controls. Note that helicopters currently don't have controller support at the time of this video, but here's how to do it on keyboard and mouse. Just so you know, if they do gain controller support, it'll be similar to how the plane controller support functions and I'll probably have released a video on it. Get in the same way you got into your plane and this time equip the tool called helicopter. The first thing you have to do is turn your engine on, but before you do this, I'd recommend you make your camera face straight and put your mouse in the centre of your screen. To go up, hold W and down is S. 
If you wish, you can also use the up and down arrow keys. Wherever your mouse is pointing, the helicopter will point to it. So if you want to go forwards, point your mouse towards the ground and the helicopter will start moving. To turn, you can move your mouse to the side of your screen and or rotate your camera in that direction. To move side to side, hold A and D. To land, hold S until you're on the ground and turn off the engine. Okay, that's pretty much everything. Thanks very much for watching. If there's anything new coming to PTFS, I'll always be the first or second to upload a video on it. So check out my videos if there's recently been an update. Have a great day and happy flying!